Let's keep calm and mother on. Mothering is way too important to do alone and way too serious to be serious all the time. My name is Christy Thomas, and I am here shoulder to shoulder with you, mothering and enjoying life together. This is the podcast where you can focus on being mindful and taking a deep breath with me and learning new things so you can pause and savor the amazing life you already have. I am very, very excited today to welcome Lisa McCracken. Did I say that right? Oh, it's McCrowan. McCrowan. I always ask before I hit record, but we're going to leave this in there because oh, flaws that's just fine. matter that's fine. and and people should ask and <laughs> names matter. So thank you so much, Lisa, for being cool. here. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about you because other people sure. might not know you as well as I do. Oh, totally. So uh, I am a psychotherapist. I mostly am a somatic experiencing psychotherapist. So that means I talk a lot about um, the body and the, the role of the nervous system in our lives. And so I take this somatic or embodied approach. And then I'm also then an integrative pr- uh, coach. So I explore the various aspects of a person's well-being. So spiritual, emotional, psychological, uh, somatic body. And then I have published two books. Yes. Uh, Gems of Delight and Your Light is Rising. And I am a mom to two teenagers. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a wild ride. And you've included. been on the internet for a while. When did you start sharing? Yeah. So, okay. It's kind of a funny story. There's a couple of funny stories. But yeah. one of them is that I wanted to, I've always been a writer. Since I was little, I have written. And even way back in elementary school in Mrs. Costumbader's third grade class, <laughs> and we started writing books about things. And I was even then writing about poetry and compassion and, and, <laughs> and funny enough, delight. I wouldn't have named it delight back then. Uh, so I had always been a poet and write and a writer. And my mom years ago was like, I think you need to start one of those things called a blog. <laughs> this is way back when it was like your blog's name dot WordPress. Dot yes. Com. And so I was like, well, what would I call it? And she's like, Lisa, gems of delight. And funny enough, then that was, of course, the name of my first book. Yeah. So I started a blog on WordPress and then that's amazing. And then, yeah. And then I just started to talk about compassionate parenting and sharing poetry. And then it sort of evolved from, from there. Yeah, I think I found you because you were offering meditations for teachers. Oh my gosh, yes, yes. Because my children went to, when they were younger, up until, well, sixth grade, they went to a Montessori school. And I was, it was a, it's a like pretty much a cooperative. It's a, it was a public Montessori school, but cooperative and everyone's involved. So I was really, I knew the teachers and the staff some of them pretty well. And then I was on the, you know, some boards. Yeah. You get involved and and invested. Yeah. (laughs) Involved and invested. And so I knew what they were going through. They would share with me and things. And so I was like, oh my goodness, we need to do something to, to help out our teachers. So yeah. Yeah. So I found that as a homeschool mom and then I bought it and I gifted a copy of it to a friend who had just um, started fostering a couple of kids oh, and I was in, was homeschooling. I was like, you need this in your life. Like, <laughs> thank you so much for that. Yes. Yeah. We all need a little bit more mindfulness and meditation. So that's one of your, your gifts to the world. Yeah. That whole sense of hmm, how to listen within and to resource ourselves so that, I mean, you know, you mm-hmm. preach this so that then we have something, we have fuel to be able to give to <laughs> others in that sense and to be doing the things that we want to do. And my two big things are follow what delights your heart, like to even recognize like what, what delights my heart, what even sparks joy in me and then how to then lead a life that we love in this season of our life, whatever the season is. That's super key. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. In this season, always, right? This season, like, I'm not living the imaginary version of me whose kids are this age and bigger or this income level or whatever it is. I call those things, and it's it's funny that you're bringing this up because I call those things the givens. Because 
people have been bringing those up a lot, like just talking to me recently. And I've been using that word a lot in my work as a psychotherapist and a coach Yeah, and saying, like, okay, so those are the givens and we, we need to not dismiss them. We need to name them. And also we don't need to get sucked into them <laughs> for all the I can'ts. So mm-hmm. it's like, sure, you just, yep, that's a given. That's a given. And sometimes we need to grieve yeah. some of the, some of the things that we thought we wanted or the expectation we different and and yet here we are with this given Uh so it needs to have some space but it doesn't need to be the thing that keeps us from oh from being nourished and resourced uh in our bodies minds and souls so uh, yeah i call those the givens the givens and everybody's givens look different everybody's givens might look right and, and that's another one of my favorite words is and it's uh-huh. one of my favorite three letter words <laughs> within the givens. So I've got these givens and what can I do? What can I do? That's so important because I was talking to a mom, I was coaching a mom and she was telling me all of her situation. And I was like, well, let me just ask you some questions. Cause like, I, I'm not bold enough to assume that I know exactly how to solve this problem. Totally. But I can ask you some questions because I know you already know the answer if we can just let you listen. Yes. Oh, and now, okay. Now you're talking about the sacredness of the space that you hold <laughs> for mom and me too in that sense of, well, that sacred space of just having some, having the space yeah. to rest in ourselves and to kind of put away the distractions so I could see why working with you is so valuable because <laughs> it's the sacred space. You know, I'm, I'm pushing my, my arms up yep. to the side right now as you're talking. You can yeah. tell because it's like, oh, just for the us, just yeah. for the one-on-one that's so important. Um, so that you can listen within yeah. and within the things and, and to be able to ask those questions. Yeah. So how do you find space in your days, Lisa? Oh, okay. Wonderful question. We, you and I were also talking about like rest and space, Mm -hmm. rest and space, rest, space, delight. Um, Like they all tie together. But if you can't find rest, at least in my experience, I can't easily tap into delight. Yes. Okay. Exactly. So one of my biggest things is finding micro moments of whatever we're needing in our seat in this season of our lives. So if it's a micro moment of rest or peace Mm -hmm. or joy and delight or connection, micro moments are doable. And no matter what the givens are, we can find, we can orient our attention. Yeah. I'm going somatic experience. Yeah. We can orient our attention in a particular way that helps to bring about the the experience that we're needing in our lives, right? And and to wire our brains in a different way, to wire our nervous systems in a different way. Um, because when we're stressed out, we are, I mean, you know, like we are in this kind of chronic fight or flight, and then we're noticing what's wrong. Yeah. So we have this bias toward the negative. So I really, really am putting my hands on my heart. See, that's even one of those basic practices. Yep. This is a micro rest for me when I put one hand or both hands on what my What a heart. simple practice. Right? What a simple practice. A mom with and a crying kid can easily touch her heart and just take a breath in. Yes, yes. And something with the breath too, just from what I've studied yep. and, and in my work with the nervous system Often we as moms, we have a lot going on so that our cup is really full. So I talk about when we're talk about the breath, uh-huh. I talk about focusing on that exhale. Uh-huh. So, there's, so because the exhale is what turns on the parasympathetic part of our nervous system, which is that rest and digest. Okay. It helps us to feel somewhat safe and, and to soften yeah. and to connect. So when you put our hands on our heart, we're having a stressful moment. A kid is crying. We're feeling overwhelmed. We haven't showered. <laughs> the dog the is barking. Someone's, exactly. yeah. The doorbell's ringing, right? Like yes, the phone, all of, all of it. 
<laughs> my heart you know rate's going up, right? right? Just right. describing yeah. it. Even as we do that or think about that right now, even just putting our hands on our heart. And then I tell people just the next breath, don't worry about the inhale, just on your next exhale, you can soften or close your eyes and whatever the inhale is, let it be. And on the next exhale, just exhale fully from your lower belly so that the belly button goes back toward the spine. And then you'll watch how your inhale becomes fuller. And then actually, let's just, you and I do that this like two more times. Yeah. Really elongating that exhale. Yeah. Something settles in us. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a whole what, vibe, what should, as my teenager would say, right? Yes, the whole vibe. <laughs> yeah. What did you just notice shift within you in just like three breaths? Three um, complete breaths? Everything feels softer. Yeah, softer. And l- lower, like gentler, mellower. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. Exactly. Like I just felt like, oh, I took my seat more, you know? Yeah, and I'm more in the- my own skin is actually what it is. Like I, exactly. the thoughts are less and I just yes. feel in my body. Yeah. Yeah. That's some, that's a micro moment of, of peace, <laughs> calm, um, connection. Of like all of that. I, I think if, if someone turns off this podcast episode right now, if you just try that, just, you've just try that. just try that. Like you don't, we add so much to our to-do list all day long, trying to be better, trying to be, softer mm-hmm. trying to be you know the best mom ever but we the don't try, have to try, add try. yeah try yeah. should do like <laughs> yeah that's that's a really good point that this can be oh just that a little bit of a homecoming you mm-hmm. using that language too it's just a homecoming and so that the hand on heart practice is something that i probably do Oh, goodness. I I don't even know how many times in a day now. (laughs) Just one of the practices that's just so innate in me. Um, Something else for specifically like around delight. Yeah. Maybe we'll alternate with delight and rest. Uh Uh-huh. I have so many practices of delight because that's like my word. (laughs) But one of the practices that I love is... Asking, well, I'll share two. One is asking, like, what would delight my heart like right now in this moment? So even in this moment, as we're doing this, like, yeah. what would delight my heart and support me even more, infusing me even more with this sense of presence and this kind of soft hum of aliveness and engagement it's like, um, I'm looking at you because I can see you yeah. doing this on Zoom. I can see you and just seeing your smile and your <laughs> eyes like that delights my heart, like and feels a soft connection. Uh-huh. I can see Sherlock, my dog, like uh laying here on the couch next to my desk. Uh-huh. <laughs> and like, so what we look at, what we see, what we hear in a moment like, what would delight my heart? Like, oh, maybe even sitting in a way that supports presence. Like, oh, that would kind of, oh, that is kind of with the heart a little bit further. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that delights me. And if we don't know what delights us, we just play around. <laughs> that was going to be the next what? question was that yeah. I had another guest on and she was talking about needs. And I was like, wait a second. Like, I don't know if I know how to label those. Like, do I even right? notice if I have to go to the bathroom until the last minute or if I'm hungry until I snap? Yes. So with delight, I say, well, well just play around with it. Like, why don't you say, well, what? Like choosing what we're going to eat for lunch and you open up the refrigerator because, of course, so many of us haven't planned it or just open it. <laughs> what do we got? You know, there. It's like, well. What would be delightful? And you're like, what? What's delightful? I don't even know. <laughs> try out a piece of cheese or try out a carrot or whatever. It's not, 
healthy now, whatever it may be. It's just like, what would be delightful right now? And, and get in playing with and getting curious about that question of what would delight me right now? What would delight my body? Yeah. Um, maybe it's like, it's turning on a song and uh-huh. dancing for three minutes with our kiddos or, Oh, I'm just going to sit while I'm waiting for my teenager to get done with <laughs> soccer practice. And I'm just going to like rest my hands on my face and close my eyes for a moment. Like that feels very delightful. Uh-huh. I mean, playing with that. Yeah. The, what and a another, luxurious oh, question though, to ask yourself, like just the idea of pausing to ask what's delightful. The idea feels good even. Yes, yes. It, there's there's a vibration there, like mm-hmm. we were talking about. That vibe is one of it, it's uplifting. It's like ooh, ooh. And I always bring in the words play and curiosity. So when because so much of our day is spent in this kind of again like that chronic fight or flight, a little bit stressed, a little uh-huh. bit right, a little bit of hyper awareness and those things. And so it's like coming into a sense of even just like, you're right. Like asking that question with play and curiosity, we shift things about the the parts of the brain that we're using. We're moving yeah. out of that stress mode. And yeah. Yeah. It, it's just a nice permission slip. Totally. Totally. And that's available to us. It's available to us like when we're in the doctor's office and waiting or, or it's even like (laughs) laying with our kiddos late (laughs) at night and whether they're young or old or whatever. Absolutely. What just even just, okay, what would delight, what, what would feel restful for my body right now? What would feel nourishing? I mean, those are all synonyms, right? For, yeah. Delight. Yeah, and so that's good to know that you can try it on in other ways if delightful doesn't hit you. Exactly. Um, Like I've been asking one of my teenagers, what would feel restful, right? Like as she comes home stressed out from school, I'm like, how can we add rest to your day? But maybe, maybe I need to experiment with another word too and see what hits her. Right. Exactly. Just to see what like, ooh, that, that resonates with me. There's something juicy about that. And it almost doesn't matter if we get it wrong. Just asking <laughs> someone else. Like, yeah. Even if we get the wrong, the wrong word. Yeah. Delight, joy, rest. Yeah. I happy, feel like it's a gift whatever. just to be asked. Yes. Because also what this does to the nervous system, when we ask someone, there's this moment where a person, we have to just, dis- we have to tune in for a moment and like, and we have to kind of, check in with ourselves. So that check-in, we are supporting that check-in when we ask that as moms, like, oh, what would feel restful right now? Like, I don't know. I don't know. You know, so we'll just wait and just kind of give yourself a couple minutes and just see what might be restful, you know, or what might be delightful, delightful. (laughs) (laughs) You have the teenage eye roll down. (laughs) I know exactly. (laughs) But it's so good. So what does play look like for you, Lisa? Because play is another one of those words that you talk about online. And I've done such a deep dive personally into play, Mm. like the science of play. And that sort is what I've dug into. Oh, oh, I love it. I I mean, it's interesting to know that there is such great science around (laughs) play. Yeah. So we forget that as adults. Oh, goodness. Okay. So first off, even just bringing up that word play can be fun. Just like, well, because it switches off that that stress mode and gets us curious. Yeah. So play for me is having, I'm even doing it in my body. Uh-huh. There's some flexibility. <laughs> there's some, there's some, a little bit of courage uh, with also curiosity. And so there's flexibility, curiosity, openness, willing to take a little bit of a risk. Yeah. You know? So it's uh, dabbling to me is what it feels dabbling. like. Yes. That's beautiful. Dabbling. So, oh gosh, what is play for me? So many, so many things about that. No, it's a good question. Okay. Here's another micro moment. And I'll say of play just 
touching my dog Sherlock's ears. They are the softest things in the world. And just going over to him between clients is, and I'll talk to him and like the way that I might use like, you know, he's like a third kiddo. From yeah. Me. <laughs> like, um, just the way that he'll just, you know, then lick my hand or I'll rub his ears. That's like <laughs> fun. Um, dropping out of my perfectionist mode when I am writing or talking with a client or working on a project. I'm like, oh, okay, let me just play with this. I'll bring that word in. And like you said, that helps me to then be willing to dabble, to mm-hmm. not get it perfect. To like, release, to make it a practice, just a because yes. thing. Yeah, yeah. Just like that it doesn't have to be perfect. Let me just yeah. play with this, right? Let me just play with this. Yeah, I'm just messing I around. <laughs> I'm just messing around. I do that. With, I also play with like food. I play with like, ooh, what would be fun to put together in this, <laughs> in this concoction? Uh, I sometimes have to be careful with that because some people that uh, uh, like we were skiing this past or the other weekend, a yeah. week and a half ago, was we always go with some family friends and we have a dinner night. Like so, meaning like we cooked it. Each yeah, family cooks dinner each night, and we were making. I was. uh we were going to make tacos. And so I take the, I take that ground turkey and I always add like, Oh, why don't I add some like carrots and kale? And I, ha- and <laughs> I was joking. You really husband, make it. Like, yeah. And my <laughs> husband's like, Oh yeah, maybe not play that way with, <laughs> with, um, with some of the, some of the other picky eaters. and stuff. Like yeah. That. Sometimes you have to, uh, to take your portion and play on the side. Yes. Yeah. So, um, play even with, uh, well, I love plants. Like I have um, a couple orchids and we have lots of green plants. Like even just playing with like, well, let me see about watering them this way and see how it goes. <laughs> so, so, uh, so there's a gift there, right? Of like you're playing with your important adult responsibilities and still seeing it as dabbling. Yeah. That's actually a really good point. I just kind of incorporate it into my everyday life, just like, now that you're saying this, play, delight, and rest. I really do incorporate just they're just incorporated into They're my just life your oxygen. Yeah. They're just my oxygen. They're just my oxygen. So if someone were to shadow you, what's the first moment of rest or delight or play in your day? Like mm. the moment you wake up. Like okay. where do you turn to first? Yeah. So that was something else that a micro thing that I do is I always, I I bookend my day. So I have a morning little practice and I have an evening practice and those change based on the literal season and the season of my heart and my body and my family. And yeah, I mean, um, this is important, right? Like my practices are nowhere near the same now that I have 16, 15 and 10. Like I couldn't have imagined this season when my kids were like zero, three, and five or something, whatever that was. Yeah. Yeah. So for me right now, when I first wake up and as a midlife woman, that might vary. (laughs) And I wake up really early and like can't get back to sleep and then, okay. So, okay, actually that's an important thing. Let's say I wake up really early, like 4 a.m. And I just, I know that I'm up. Like I, yeah, my body's up. I will, uh, here I am putting my hand on my heart yep. again. Okay. So I'm up right now. So I will very Thich Nhat Hanh style, the Vietnamese Buddhist monk Thich Nhat mm-hmm. Hanh. I'll literally just name like, oh, okay. So I'm up right now. And then I'll, instead of, and I'll put my hand on my heart, a hand on my heart is just a practice in the morning. Like it's just a given and let's say I start then to get worried because I tend to run anxious. Like there's just, I just try yeah. to play around with, I have some anxiety. So that's just here. And uh, I've spent a lot of money and time trying to fix it. And, and now over the last maybe decade, I'm just like, okay, so I might wake up with anxiety or I might get anxious about stuff. All right. Well, what now then? Instead of trying to get rid of it, uh-huh. how do I relate to it in a healthy way? So I might name that that's here. And then it's like, oh gosh, what if I go to an anxious thought of like, oh, it's 4 a.m. I have several things today. What if I don't <laughs> last till nine o'clock tonight after I, you know, the, the pickup from soccer? Uh-huh. I bring up a really 
playful practice, which is just maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Like if I say like, oh, I'm going to be exhausted, blah, blah, blah. I start going down this train of thought. I'm like, I stop myself. Well, maybe, maybe not. Hang on, honey. So there's another practice. I use a term of endearment with myself. Yeah. Most often it's love or honey or because those are things I use with my kiddos uh-huh. and things. So, so already those are just three things right in the morning, like hand on heart. Yeah. Having some compassion for myself of, and, putting a, a break on the, on the worry of like, whoa, 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 maybe, maybe not. Yeah. You don't let yourself spiral down. Like you're stopping that. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a way of relating with anxiety uh, to anxiety that I really learned uh, and practiced over time. And then, and then in the morning, right there in that moment, um, I might like stretch even just on the bed. <laughs> I might roll over and try to uh block the, the I turn on my uh flashlight of my phone. <laughs> yep. It's really early. Trying not to wake my husband <laughs> up and just start journaling um a little bit and stuff or writing a poem. Do you do that and just right in bed? Sometimes I do. Yeah. Yeah. I just roll over. It's not, you know, I'm always just curious about other people's creative practices. That's why I'm getting down to the nitty gritty with that one. Yeah. Because my, my body feels good. I I spend so much of the day upright. (laughs) Yeah. So much of the day upright and then moving my body. I'm moving, picking up kiddos and going from one thing Mm -hmm. to the other and standing and walking and bending, which I try to incorporate too in my day. But like, I luxuriate a little bit of just letting myself lay horizontal yeah for a little bit but it's good to hear like that that journaling moment matters and that it counts right like so often a mom might be laying down in bed and like thinking or daydreaming or doing something that feels nourishing but then we invalidate it because like oh i'm here like i should be doing something different so those shoulds i know we all deal with that (laughs) And that like not good enough or not doing enough uh-huh. the enoughness and the shoulds. Mm-hmm. I have started to practice this over the last years of being a parent and then also then supporting others, uh, my clients. I say like, okay, let's just develop a new relationship with the enoughness and the shoulds. Yeah. So they're just going to happen because they're in the water right now. They're in the <laughs> atmosphere of parenting, right? Like, yeah. Well, I feel, especially here, like we moved to Northern Virginia about a year ago and I feel like I go outside and I just catch the shoulds. Like you just oh, breathe, exa- right? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I mean, they are just even, yeah, even well-intentioned Things sometimes with parenting Uh can feel like, and I should, or we're not doing it right. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you open up your phone, you're going to catch the shoulds. Oh, totally. So I have stopped trying to get rid of those. Okay. And have stopped trying to, oh, why don't, if I don't, if I don't feel good enough or I'm doing enough, I don't try to change, I don't try to get rid of those anymore because there's a lot of energy that we can put into trying to get rid of that. Instead, just like anxiety for mm-hmm. me, I'm about relating to that in a healthy way. So when the shoulds come yeah, or when the not enoughness is come yeah. or the anxiety, to me, it's about naming Thich Nhat Hanh style. Yeah. That's the mindfulness part. And then the, the compassion part. So any practice that comes in with compassion, that, that combination of, of mindfulness and compassion lead to then a, oh goodness, so much for our nervous system and then making some better choices about like, well, no, no, I don't need to let, let that anxiety or the should or the not enoughness take over yeah. my awareness and, and get spiraled into that. It's like, hang yeah. on, hang on. I can offer some healthy containment for those. I love that. So, And that's that's when that and comes in. <laughs> yeah. I, might have, I might feel this way. I might feel like, oh, gosh, there's this. I'm not enough. Or, oh, my uh-huh. God. And, and I can still choose. Yeah. To the lay, lay here in journal in bed. Rest, to lay in bed. Exactly. exactly. To read a book, to do... To do the puzzle, whatever feels like the thing that you shouldn't be doing. Totally. Totally. I love this. Thank you. I think I needed this conversation. 
too. Me too. It's, been, it's good to reflect on things like this. It yes. is. And then one of my other favorite things that you share on social media is that you have a sandwich board in your front yard, don't you? Oh, yes. Right. Yes. Right now it is on my porch because I am in the process between changing poems. But yes, I have a sandwich board, a sandwich poetry board. Yeah. Yes. So you leave poems that you write in your front yard for people to read. I do. My, okay. So my sweet dad, he, in retirement, he loves to do things for people and us. Yeah. And stuff. He made me this really, <laughs> it's a big one, this big poetry board. It weighs a ton because it's made <laughs> out of like real wood. I'm like, okay. Uh, and he did it with plexiglass and we, um, all those things. And so, uh, so yeah, I sometimes, I get out poster board. Now I have a practice. I, I have my system down. I get out a piece of poster board. I cut it like in half and I write at least a line or more it depends uh, or like a haiku. I'll do use a short poem yeah. or things uh, or maybe a couple like three, four lines or something from a poem that I've written. And I might decorate it a little bit with some magic markers or, or even paint on a flower or something. Yeah. And I stick in the poetry board for a couple of weeks and then I change it out. So it's so it's cool. Been, it's been awesome to hear from neighbors. Uh, I haven't had one up for a couple of weeks now. And one of my neighbors, uh, I don't know her name, but a couple blocks yeah. away. She's, she has two dogs. Our dogs all know each other. And, uh, and she was like, Oh my gosh, when are you putting up your next poem? I'm waiting for your next poem. And even when I, our, my next door neighbor, uh, his little, kiddo, I won't name names, but yeah. anyway, a little kiddo next door who always kind of is around. And and he came over one day and was like, you know, we read your poem every day. <laughs> it's the same one. We walk by on our walk, Miss Lisa. So it's really neat to hear that. It is yeah. really neat to hear. The older couple across the street for me has a dad joke they put up every oh week in their front yard. Perfect. Oh my gosh, that's so great. And so, yeah, every day, like we check to make sure that it, is it the same joke? Is it a different joke? <laughs> that is so cool. I love that. And that's, that's getting creative with delight. Yeah. And play and fun. Yes. Yeah. And then in the summer, they have, they, they go one step higher. They put up the, you know, those little animal statues you can buy. They yeah. took pictures of them and they have it on a sign of how many they have hidden in their garden. So it's like an I spy game from the sidewalk. That is so great. I yeah. She that. told me she started it during the pandemic, right? So like, so people could interact and have something to do and she could have something to do. But yeah, like she's 80 and she's leaning into delight like this. I love that. Just creative thing of whatever comes to us and just playing with it. And why not take why not? a little bit of a soul risk? Yeah, because it was a soul risk for me to put out uh -huh. like, oh, one of my poems. Oh, I bet. <laughs> what might people think? It's vulnerable. You know, it's not like the internet. Yes, it's <laughs> vulnerable. So willing to play, play, there's that word again with vulnerability. Yeah. And it's delightful. And I mean, you've got yes. books of poetry. <laughs> you share, <laughs> but to have it in your front yard feels different. It does feel different. You're right. There's, it, uh, Putting it in a book is one thing. Uh, sharing it on a podcast is another. And then sharing it live and then sharing it with your neighbors. You know, <laughs> you may not all like be on the same There page is something different stuff. there. Yeah. There's something different there. Yeah. Oh, so do you write poems mostly or do you write essays? What do you feed your soul oh with, with words? So I love to write. I write, I still write blog posts here and there. Uh, I've been Writing more for my podcast. Yeah. Uh, just cause I'll write down ideas based on what I hear clients talking about or something that, that I'm playing with mm -hmm. or working with. Um, so those are kind of like podcast posts. <laughs> yeah. Way, they're audio blogs. Yeah. 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 And, and then poems. I always come back to poetry, uh, and those things. Like my first book, Gems of Delight is really for moms and that whole sense of how do we heal that hurry and relate to the hurry mm -hmm. so that we just were soothed and nourished. And so there's stories in there as well mm -hmm. and stories and, and different experiences that I've had. So sharing from my life. Yeah. And getting vulnerable and real about the things that I encounter and 
maybe it relates to someone and, and, and hopes of that. So, yeah. So poetry and stories, uh, you know, I could do a lot more technical work and talk more about the nervous system and my expertise in that, but that's not really what lights me up. <laughs> um, yeah. I do also write uh, sometimes for some of the organizations that I, that I consult with. Okay. So, um, like leadership things and stuff like that, which incorporate a sense of delight. I may not even use that word. Right. Maybe I do. Uh, and leadership and compassionate leadership and mindful leadership. So yeah, that's great. If someone wanted to try writing a poem, do you have any tips? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Well, so sometimes it's fun to have a structure and sometimes uh-huh. it's not. So some people get intimidated by a structure and some people don't. So for those people that like, okay, give me a little structure because <laughs> just writing any kind of poem, this feels blank too much. page feels terrifying. Yes. Yes. A lot of times I say, well, what about a haiku? And that it's the five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables, right? Mm-hmm. Just like, and pick anything, ocean, flower, dog, cat, stress, what any word that you want to play with. Again, there's that yeah. word and see about that. And that sometimes can be less intimidating uh, to have a, have a structure. Unstructured. Oh my goodness. Take, I say like, take a topic yeah. or take a, a feeling or a particular position on something or a point of view. I often suggest finding like one thing, like a leaf or um, a, f- a particular feeling or telling a story about okay. one particular experience. Um and just playing with that, just play, just put some, doesn't matter. Go free form. Don't worry about rhyming. Don't worry about rhyming. Um, yeah. Most throw of all my, the rules out the window. Just oh, write. Yeah, throw the rules out the window. 99% of my poems do not rhyme. And some people do like rhyming. So, okay. Yeah. It's really like pick something that don't make it stressful. We could so make something like that stressful <laughs> and make it delightful. Like what would delight my heart right now in terms of, in terms of writing a poem? Okay. I need structure. I don't need structure. Okay. Yeah. And, and go, going from there. Well, thank you for letting someone experiment in that way because it's such a joy. You're like radiating joy when you're talking oh. about your poetry. And I just want to make sure someone knows that you could try that. Like, we can all try to be poets and artists oh, yes. and yes. And, and even how we, it took me a long time to name that and claim that like, Oh yeah, I, I am a poet. <laughs> even though I'd been writing poetry my whole life and I have binders of poems and I was like, Oh, I really am a poet. Oh, I really am a writer. And then, and then an author. Okay. Fine. Because I, you know, wrote books. Yeah. So what? Like, that's just something I want to do. You don't have to write a book. And what about, what about you just play with it without, oh gosh, like having to do something with it. It's that time with cooking, right? Like I am not going to go be a food blogger or a nutritionist or it's just, I play with it. Like, yeah. Just to have fun. If I get to nourish my family, how can it be delightful? Exactly. Exactly. Well, thank oh, you so thank much. You. How, oh, so we will wrap up with the last two questions here. What mm. is an activity you're doing? I mean, you've given so many, but mm, what's think- one more activity that you do for self care? Something simple. Yeah. That I do for self care. So. One thing that I do between clients, so I have a particular schedule, right? Like I have a somewhat set schedule and I create, here's maybe even two practices that are related. I do not put one activity, I try not to, right on top of the other. Like I do not schedule one client and then the very next, you know, client times are like 55 minutes I schedule it for 15 minutes later. So does that mean I get, I see fewer clients in a day? Yes. But I do not, I try not to stack activities right on top of themselves and between things then. So let's just say, yeah. um, I only have five minutes between things. Like when we wrap up in about, uh, in 15 minutes after yeah. we wrap up, I'll go get my, uh, my, my older kiddo from high school, um, I pick them up. And so 
but I've given myself at least 15 minutes. So let's just say you even have five yeah. or three minutes. I use that transition time for a moment. I mean, even as we're doing this, we're talking right now, I'm closing my eyes. I might put my hands on my heart. I feel my breath. I feel my feet on the earth. And I just take this sacred pause, micro pause or 15 minute pause for myself. So between, even after, if I'm dropping a kiddo off at practice and then, and then I got to get another one over somewhere else and I'm not super, super rushed. I literally, after the kiddo gets out of the car, I will take one minute and just bring my shoulders down and back, soften for a moment, come into my breath. And I, so I use I don't try, I try not to transition super quickly. I use the transitions for a moment of coming back home to me. Yeah. I don't stack things. I, kids activities might be another story, but a lot of my day, I don't stack things right on top of each other. I love that. But I, I'm really resonating with the fact of like in between all the hectic driving in the evenings of one right. kid to another that I could add maybe that minute. Like that's not or that even, hard or 30 seconds or two breaths. Something. Or even after you drop off the first kiddo and then you drop off the second right. kiddo and you've got a little bit of time, like, oh, luxuriate yourself in it. And just let, oh, give that as a gift to yourself. Like just, oh, I've got two minutes just to sit here with my eyes closed for a moment and come back home to myself. Yeah. Yeah. So that micro moment that of a sacred pause or yeah. a micro moment of coming home to ourselves. So I use that a lot. Um, and we actually, I think, sometimes have more control over our scheduling than we think we do. Like I think I, we do too. I'm like, mm, <laughs> hang on a second. I'm not going to schedule this doctor's appointment and then I have to hurry and rush. So where it's possible, I try not to... Hurry, hurry, hurry. Yeah, I'm advocating more for myself. Yes, For that exactly. buffer. That buffer, that's the word. Yes, this soulful, somatic buffer that if we do that like 10 times a day, five times a day, that is, I cannot tell you how nourishing that is for the nervous system. I love it. So, yeah. I, and and yeah. it's something like that's the simple thing that I hope my kids notice by osmosis. Like, yes. Because I know they're not always willing to listen and learn that th sort of thing from mom. <laughs> totally. But if they notice yes. me doing it and notice a change, I hope that then mm. they they try it someday. <laughs> well, sometimes they might even ask me, like, I'm just thinking the number of times where, let's say they're asking something of me and mm -hmm. I just, I just, and I might close my eyes like, mom, what are you doing right now? I'm like, I'm just literally just taking a moment for myself and regulating my nervous system. So I tell them what I'm doing and like, well, that's weird or what? I don't know. So <laughs> it's still like, but it's planting some seeds. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, how are you enjoying your amazing family that you have? Yeah. So that next practice of like family bonding, right? Yeah. The, family fun. The, the, yeah. Family fun. So. One of the things that we do as a family is, and as they've gotten older, we choose adventures over stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we put, instead of gifts, we try to do adventures. And we happen to all love, this started about five, six years ago when my son asked to go snow snowboarding. I was like, sure, I'll try it with you because I'm pretty athletic. So I thought, oh, I could, I can do this. I'm like, this is about an hour into the lesson, I'm like, this is not for me. <laughs> so, but then my daughter, she always, she likes to have my yeah. son test things out first. And so she said, Oh, Aiden had so much fun. So, uh, can we go skiing? So I told Claire, I was like, sure, let's try skiing. And she and I both loved it. So then we got my husband on board and he does snowboarding with my son. And so for the last years, we have been snowboarding and, and skiing all winter long as much as we can in Maryland and then Vermont and yeah. out west when we can go. So this idea of like, we will get them gear. So that it's, if we get them stuff, it's for our adventures. Mm -hmm. So just that thing of choosing 
adventures over stuff and we choose to buy like the epic pass because that's just what we do in the yeah. winter and we, that's how we spend our money. And so, uh, that just that idea of what would it be like to choose little adventures over stuff or just, uh-huh. just little adventures, like, just oh, adventures, just go, on a yeah. little adventure. Yeah. just go on a little adventure. Like let's take a different way home and see if there's a park on the way home and uh, those things. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Well, where is the best place for people to find you, Lisa? Oh yeah. So my website and I will, I'll, I'll spell out my name. So, people know <laughs> them. so, so my website is Lisa com. So that's L I S A and then M C C R O H A N.com. Fantastic. And I'll make sure that's in the show notes for people to click to. Well, thank thank you so much, Lisa. I am so glad you are here on earth and you have always been exactly the right mom for your kids. So thank you for being here. Oh yeah. Thank you. And thanks for having me then.